What you see here is the Hoover Convertible model U4009 from 1973 or 74. It's the same model year lineup as my 1970, well, same, same thing, 73, 74. Hoover U4007, I've made videos on the Harvest Gold one with the flower, you know, green yeah, and Harvest Gold on the bag. This is a recent eBay score. I've always wanted one of these Hoovers. Um, you know, it's a metal-based convertible with a full hood. Uh, you know, the other one had a full hood too, but what I mean by full hood is, if you look at, I'll compare the two. My Harvest Gold one has a round, this part here is rounded off. This, when I say full hood on this thing, this the, the plastic hood on this one is huge. And these, I've always seen these in like catalogs and stuff. They've always weirded me out. I always wanted one, and now I got one to complement all my other colors. Hey, I just saw something. This is like terracotta orange on the Lakewoods. And Kylie loves it already. And uh, this is a before video because I've done nothing to it except take it out of the box and assemble it. Which is only like where I put two screws in, put the handle on clamp on the bag and it's ready to go. It has a belt and bag in it already. And despite its appearance, it does not have a headlight. It's just an insert that says Deluxe Convertible. My other one says Custom Convertible. Here's the back of it. Pretty standard affair. Because it's even though it has a full hood and everything, it is a lower end model, so there's no zipper on the bag, just the buttons. The bag is in excellent shape. Now in this video here, this is going to be my first time powering it on. The seller did say it had, sounded like dry bearings, which we will remedy tonight by oiling the top sleeve bearing and greasing the lower ball bearing. It has a new belt, or I'm assuming a new herb belt and a bag in it because it's not stretched or cracked or anything. I'm going to power it up right now. We're going to see what this thing can do as a before video. I just want to turn it on again. When I first turned on, I heard a little bit of a squeak. Let me try that again with the uh, brush roll off the floor. It's not too bad. Oh, and the other thing you got to do is you got to grease the ball bearings on the brush roll, which I will also do. So this is a before video. I like it already. First time turning on. And this thing amazes me is each one of these convertibles has a different sound to it, ever so slightly. I'm liking it. Okay, this is the U4009 apart. No headlamp in the front. It is a two-speed unit. This is no maintenance on I haven't done anything to it yet. This is the hood. And if you look, see, that's how what I mean by scuffed up. But you will see, I can I can work wonders with stuff like this. It might look beat up now. This is the inside. You can see it's mint on the inside. And look at this. The hood, that insert, look at how it's formed. It, it, it would have been a headlight lens cover. 
This whole vacuum is weird. This is the terracotta orange color of the Hoovers. And that's this, this is all I've done with it so far. Even though this is supposed to be like a lower end convertible, it also has the full handle grip on it. The ch you, my older models that are cheaper don't even have handle grips. This whole vacuum is weird. Brush roll. Let's see how freely it turns. It's a little bit stiff, the turn. So, greasing those bearings, ball bearings, I'll show. So, let's disassemble this unit. Okay, got the motor unbolted and the switch unplugged for the two speed control. That'll focus. What I want to do next is carefully turn, lay it down like this. A little stiff. This is the fan. This is a reverse threading screw, so I'm going to turn it clockwise to remove it while holding the fan blade still. That wasn't, uh, didn't require too much effort to get off. Oops. Oh, quite heavy, too. And usually, if he's never been taken off, there's going to be a bunch of dirt caked under it. So let's see. Whoa! I think somebody was in this before me. Because this is like on a little bit of dirt. This thing's spotless. Somebody was in here before me. I don't know if the guy got this stuff as a, a vacuum collector or not. In the eBay uh, description and pictures, he had the, the top of it off. This is the ball bearing right here. I'm going to flip this back over. This is the top sleeve bearing here. And of course it says do not lubricate. Yeah, permanently lubricate. There's, there's the pads on them. So I'll be putting some oil in there and also put a drop on the bearing itself before I put it back together. That's the top sleeve bearing. This is a little fan to cool the motor. Uh, it comes, it blows air out the sides like that. You can see where it invents that and so forth. Okay. So, I'm going to continue taking this apart. Okay, next step, take the cooling fan off. It's threaded on there, but being that it's on the other end of the motor, it, uh, it it's, it's normal. It just returns um, counterclockwise to get it off. As you can see, there's the two brushes, and this is what I mean. Back then, stuff is awesome. He, he can service the brushes. There's the uh, plugs for it right there. You can very easily put new brushes in, but it's like, why? Because I think if I lift this off, see, look how much brush life is left. Holy crap. And this is what the inside of the motor looks like. Okay, I got the armature out. There's your commutator windings. I had to do a little trick from the Lakewood P23. Took a heat gun to it and just gently tapped it out with that because I couldn't get it out any other way. And after the third whack, it went flying out. I'm like, damn. <laughs> And this is where the ball bearing is, which is covered in dirt. But here's the inside of the motor. There's your brushes over there. Here's the vacuum. So everything's all apart right now. First thing I'm going to do is clean it up. I got the brush roll bearings apart. This little f washer here, fiber washer or whatever is missing on this one but I bought a bunch of these fiber washers for this purpose a while ago this is the bearing here I'm gonna pack it with grease as soon as I clean out the old grease in it and I've done that in the past before I'd soak it in acetone and keep doing it till all the grease is gone and pack new fresh grease in there I just uh, cleaned everything up uh, these are the two end caps and the end pieces for the ball bearings for the brush roll the upper bearing I cleaned up and the cooling fan for the motor right there 
I got this. I got all the, looks like it's getting all the old dirt and grease out of the ball bearings. I've had success doing this before because I was trying to figure out how the heck to get all that old grease out of there. It works wonders last time they put all fresh grease in it. It spins really good. So that's going to be my next step. Somebody definitely got to this before me and cleaned it up because there's not a speck of dust in this brush roll. Though I will say this vacuum must have been in a damp basement or something because everything has corrosion on it. It's not going to be a problem for operation and all the parts that do have corrosion you're not going to see anyhow. It's just I'm just making an observation. Same goes for my U4007. Had a lot of corrosion on it too, but again, you can't see it because it's all internal. Now, this is the top bearing all cleaned up. Right now, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in it. Some Zoom Spout oil. This is just a sleeve bearing. I'm going to make a little bit of mess, but I'll clean it up trying to hold the camera and do this but you see all I'm doing putting on the felt pads and when I put it on I'll probably put a drop on the bearing itself but yeah it should soak it up I mean, this is relatively easy and self-explanatory okay the two ball bearings I was able to get grease packed in them and they turn really really smoothly right now both of them after cleaning the end bearings and the original felt washer there was one felt washer missing and this one's half disintegrated I purchased these online these are actual Hoover parts as you can see this is what it looks like when it goes in there it's to help prevent dirt from going down in there and I think it yeah it also acts as a spacer I got the one end on. I just screw this one on, it should be okay. There's like no resistance at all. This thing just turns. Now if it fresh lubricant and clean. Okay, I just got done cleaning the bag as you can see. First was simple green to get all the dirt off. Finishing it up with Vinylex. I took the little tube out as well, cleaned it. But on the bag there, right where the handle would go on the front, I don't know if you saw it in the early part of the video, there was a big black stripe on the little um, decorative symbol there. Now you can see how bright and white it is, and shiny. I Vinylex the bag inside and out. Vinylex is like Armor All, but better. But I can't, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't seen it in the store lately. It's made by Lexol. Now to put the tube back in. Oh, about two hours later, of constant polishing and rubbing. Novus. Whatever the hell it's at. Novus 3, Novus 2, Novus 1. Ah, this thing was just really banged up. I got it. I tried to get it, out, get it all the best I could. It's not perfect, but some of those were really deep. I got most of the scuffs out of the top. So at least, at least see, come over it now. It's all shiny. And I thoroughly cleaned the rubber furniture guard. Grease the bottom bearing. I was reading online, like some people use syringes to shove grease in there, but what I did, first thing I did, I just stuck a drop of oil in there to, so I can't get it out to soak it in acetone because there's four metal tabs that'll break easily if you try to take it out. And as you can see, it's also riveted in place. It makes it harder. So I put a few drops of um, Zoom Spout in there I freed it up. Then I packed it with grease and I shoved it down in there. There's a little bit there. I tried cleaning up. I'll finish that. But yeah, when you turn on the grease, it'll all get sucked in. That's how I did my other vacuums. Put the fan on. 
Well, there it is. I'm going to start reassembling this thing now that it's all cleaned up and greased up. Now on the bottom, I, not much to clean up, it is clean. And uh, I put a drop of oil on all the wheels, as you can see. Put a drop of oil on this flapper here. This is how I put the tools into it and it hits the little hockey puck thing here. And if you listen, that's actuating this two-speed switch. Put a drop of oil on that, on this part here. That's nice and smooth. Spin that, that's nice and free now. And that's it, I mean, everything's cleaned up and these little uh, rollers here have good enough grease on it still. That's nice and smooth. And this is nice and smooth. This wasn't, I, my other Hoover convertibles where you had a lot of difficulty moving that. I had put some drops of oil on there and a little bit of grease. But this is all good. I'm going to handle that and one more time. Put it down like that. That's fine. That's it. Like that. The front, like that. Well, I'm going to start reassembling this. Here it is. All back together. The deluxe convertible. I love that design on the bag. To me, this is, this is definitely a real vacuum. Like I said at the beginning of this video about the full hood, just how that vent looks like it. It's more vertical compared to the other ones. And tonight, I will also be demoing it with the Model 1031 tool set, the sticky note. I have three sets of these 1031s, and I just happen to identify which goes with which vacuum. I'll just, it's just for the U4007, I'll put the U4009 right here. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is what I meant by the different hood types. Here's the U4007 right here with nine foot extension cord on it. But see how the hood is curved in events like that. This one actually has a headlamp and it says custom convertible on it. This was the top of the line one for 1973. And it carried this hood for several years because here is the 1986 one I did a video on last time. <laughs> it's the same hood, just different colors. And the base is plastic on the 1986 one, but other than that, it's the same hood.